We're going to model, texture, animate, and render a laptop in Blender in 10 minutes. If you want to learn more about the tools and techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, then check out my Blender ebook, the link is below. We're going to take the first two images from this Amazon page to serve us as background images. We need a higher resolution image with a keyboard, so I just searched for that on Google Images, and the second image over here is pretty good. I also needed some pictures of the various details around this laptop, but it was kind of hard to find those on Google. Luckily, every female has a MacBook, so I managed to get a whole bunch of close-up shots. In Blender, we're going to go Top View, Shift A, Image, Reference, and I'm going to place my Front Reference and my Top View Reference in the backgrounds of the scene. Now, let's start with the keyboard. First, we're going to model one key. I'm going to add a plane, Control B, Control V to bevel the vertices. Join the opposite vertices like this. And with proportional editing, I'm gonna add a little bit of curvature here. Extrude, delete the bottom face, bevel this, shade smooth, and now add an array modifier to create all the other keys. Adjust the factor in the array modifier so the keys are aligned. Then duplicate this array to create the other rows and adjust the count so it matches the reference. Some keys are a little bit different, but we can just use a square key and stretch it out a little bit. Once we have all the keys in place, we just have to UV unwrap them and then we can apply the text. To UV unwrap this correctly, first of all, all these keys have to be part of the same object. Apply all modifiers, then select them all and press Ctrl J. Alt right click on one sharp edge loop, then press Shift G, select similar face angles. Now press Ctrl E, mark seam. In face select mode, press L while hovering over one key, then press Shift G, select similar normal, and now you have all the top surfaces selected. In edit mode, press U, project from view, and now you have the same layout on your UV map as you see over here. New material, image texture node, load up the keyboard image, and then adjust the UV map the UV editing workspace. Now the keys are ready, we have to make the laptop itself. Shift A to add a new plane in the middle of the keyboard. Make this plane slightly wider and slightly longer than the keyboard. Add some loop cuts to turn this surface into only square tiles, then subdivide it a couple of times, and then use the geometry from the edges of this plane which we just created to create the frame for the laptop. Add some more loop cuts to turn everything into squares again. Select a corner like this, W, loop tools, relax, interpolation to linear, number of iterations three, and do the same thing on all the corners to make them a bit more round. Extrude everything down, select the faces around the keyboard, Inset with I, and again use your loop tools relax to make this corner round. Move this out of the way, and I'll extrude this surface down a little bit to make this lowered area where the keys are fitted into. Give me a tiny bevel over here, and we're going to use this geometry on the sides to create these ports for whatever that is. Why don't they just use regular USB ports like everybody else? I know they're just trying to take your money, aren't they? To create one of these ports, we're going to select nine little faces like this, inset them, delete the faces in the middle, push these two edges apart, and when we subdivide this, it's gonna start to look the way we want it to look. We gotta bevel these corners, and I want another hole over here, so I'll delete these faces. 3D cursor over here, 3D cursor is a pivot point, then shift D, right click, and scale this to minus one of the Y axis, merge vertices by distance, correct to normals, and now we got two portholes which we can extrude inwards. Duplicate these faces, lift them up a little bit, push them backwards, extrude them up a little bit, add a loop cut to each of these, bevel that loop cut, add another loop cut, and another loop cut like this, bevel this, and now when we subdivide everything, it's gonna look perfect. It might be wise to get rid of this bevel over here because we still have some details that we have to add to the body of the laptop. So select the edge loops that go all the way around, press Control plus, then in vertex select mode, deselect these edge loops on the corners, and press X to dissolve edges. You might have to select some of these vertices and slide them down and merge by distance. In the middle of the laptop, select a surface like this, then inset it with I, bring the geometry close together, delete this surface in the middle, then we're going to manually extrude some edge loops like this and bring them down to the other vertices. Connect all the vertices. Over here, we gotta do face, grid fill, push everything forwards like this, bevel this, and when we subdivide this, this is gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna push these corners apart a little bit and now I think this is finished. Next give me a touchpad, select a surface like this, inset, loop tools relax the corners, loop tools space on the corners, bevel this segment, extrude it down and also bevel this to improve the shading. We also have to cut out a shape in the front here that will allow us to fit the hinge for the monitor. To do so box select this in wireframe, inset, delete faces and grid fill is not working here so we're going to have to manually fill these faces here. Once we cut this part out we can start making the monitor. To make the monitor, we're gonna select these corners, shift D, right click, lift them up a little bit and separate them to a new object. Connect the vertices between the corners, add some more loop cuts to these new edges, then go face, grid fill, and then just adjust these figures to get a nice fill here. In this case, 23 and minus 18 works for me. Lower this down to the surface, extrude it up to give it some thickness, elevate the inner surface to make this a little bit more round. Now select all the sharp angles, control B to bevel them, and to make the hinge for simplicity's sake, we're just going to use a cube, scale that shit down, scale it up on the X axis, 
axis, bunch of loop cuts like this, bevel everything, and then subdivide it. Parent the monitor to the hinge, and now we can use the hinge to open this up. Select the surface in the middle, inset, relax the corners, then let's just inset this and extrude it backwards a little bit, inset one more time, and now we can use this surface to make the monitor. Now the modeling is finished, let's add some simple materials. Let's go back to Google and get a screensaver. I'll take this one over here, and the resolution is kind of shitty, so I'm gonna go over here to upscale media, upload image, and then I'm gonna increase the resolution and sharpness of my image to make it look a bit nicer. Once it's done processing, go to download, and in the shading workspace, let's create a new material for the screen. We're going to name that screen saver, load up the image, we're going to mark a seam around the screen. With L, we're going to select the screen, U, unwrap, and we're going to adjust the UV map in the UV editing workspace. It turns out that this edge is supposed to be a lot thinner, so we're going to to get rid of some of these edge loops and then scale this monitor up to bring it as close as possible to the sides. Now we need a new material for the frame of the screen. So use this plus button to create a new material slot, assign that to the frame, new material, we're gonna make that black. And for the screen itself, we're going to reduce the roughness to almost zero because that's supposed to be nice and shiny. The worst thing that can ever happen to you is when you have one of those matte screens. And if you're in anything other than a cave, you won't be able to see shit on the screen. I don't know why they do that. Just give me a glossy monitor. Apply this same black material to the body of the computer. We're gonna make this metallic because I think that looks way cooler. And I think it would be cool if we make a separate material for the touchpad. So let's make that gray slightly lighter than the surface of the laptop. And I also don't want it to be as reflective. Turns out the keys look way better if they're metallic. And sometimes your materials and your colors might look kind of shitty. But if you change your HDRI up here in the material preview, they look a lot better with a different HDRI. I'm going to go over to PaintNet to design a little logo so I don't get sued. I'm gonna try to find the font that makes this look halfway decent. And then instead of an apple, we're going to use something like this as our logo. We're going to make this completely black, cut out a little hole over here, put this over a gray background, and this is going to act as a roughness map, which we're going to place at the back of the screen. So on the monitor frame, I'm going to select a little surface in the front like this, U, unwrap, and we're going to load up the logo in this material. Now in the UV editing workspace, we can adjust the UV map of only this little segment over here so that we fit the text onto this area. Now we got a text logo. On the back of this laptop, we're gonna select a surface like this. You unwrap, give me another image texture node. Let's get the crack pipe, non-color, plug that into roughness. And it looks like this has to be a separate material. So let's just duplicate this, remove the text from this material. And now we can place this on the back of our laptop. I think that looks wonderful. Now the textures are ready. Let's make a quick animation and render this. We're gonna fold this laptop over like this. This is the starting position. My animation is going to be a close-up of this keyboard. So we're going to start in this position, select the screen, press I to keyframe location rotation. Then 100 frames down the line, we're going to open this up like this and keyframe it again here. Select both keyframes, T interpolation linear. I'll place my camera over here with control alt zero. We're going to add a little bit of depth of field. Set the F stop to something low like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And now we can adjust the distance to make it look like it's focusing on different parts. So on frame zero, the distance Distance is going to be keyframe to this and on frame 40 we're going to increase that a little bit and keyframe it again now also keyframe the position of the camera on frame zero then move it slightly along the x-axis over here and we can also lower it a little bit like this and keyframe the camera position again the camera motion is supposed to be way slower so we're going to take this vertex and pull it out here the background looks way better if we give it a bit of color and we make the roughness very low that way in render view we can see some reflections of the screen on the floor here add a plane and make it long give it a new material white emission emission strength Three, lift it up, array modifier like this, and we're going to animate the lights so they start down here and they move over here somewhere. To do that, give me an empty, parent the lights to the empty, keyframe the empty on this position, then on keyframe 100, rotate it like this, and keyframe it again. Now, since I'm rendering this in cycle, it's gonna take about three days to get a final product. I'm gonna tweak this a little bit more. If you wanna see it, comment down below and I'm gonna put it on Instagram. And let's see what Derek Elliott has to say about this. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the fucking ebook. Let me know what you wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one.